الحديث الرابع The fourth hadith عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إذا توضأ أحدكم فليجعل في أنفه ماء ثم لينتثر ومن استجمر فليوتر وإذا استيقظ أحدكم من نومه فليغسل يديه قبل أن يدخلهما في الإناء ثلاثا فإن أحدكم لا يدري أين بات جده وفي لفظ لمسلم فليستنشق بمن خريه بمن بمن خريه من الماء وفي لفظ من توضا فليستنشق This حديث امام البخاري نريت ان كتاب الوضوء ري اوسو نريت ان كتاب بدء الخلق امام مسلم ام نريت ان كتاب الطهاره and the wording is his um Another narration, Bukhari narrated in his Sahih, Kitab al Tahara, um, and another narration, Imam al Muslim, uh, Bukhari and Muslim, both of them, they narrated with the word Faliyastanthir, both of them. Okay, and also Darakutri narrated the hadith in his Sunan, Kitab al Wudu. But the way where it says in the hadith, وإذا استيقظ أحدكم من نومه فليغسل يديه قبل أن يدخلهما في الإناء ثلاثا. That word ثلاثا is not in the wording of Bukhari. Zarkashi pointed that out in his look at Al Umda. He said that is not the uh, the tathlif. ثلاثا is not in Bukhari. Is not in Bukhari. That is the wording of Muslim. Bukhari did not mention the three. Because he said, and also in his kitab al-Mu'tabar, he said, وَاللَّفْضُ ثَلَاثًا لَمْ يَرْوِيهَا الْبُخَارِي وَمَنْ ذَكَرَهَا فِي الْمُتَّفَقِ عَلَيْهِ كَصَاحِبِ الْعُبْدَى فَقَدْ وَهِمَا Very well. The Sahabi that narrated the hadith is who? Abu Huraira. We took his biography in the second hadith. What does this hadith talk about? It talks about, or it clarifies, matters pertaining to the different types of tahara and their rulings. The wordings of the hadith. The Prophet he said, إِذَا تَوَضَّأَ Here, the Prophet said, if one of you does wudu, صحيح? That's what he says. Does he not say that? If one of you does wudu, um, if one of you does wudu, فَحَدُكُمْ فَلْيَجْعَلْ لَا إِنْ place in his nose water. But in the Arabic language, if you say تَوَضَّأَ إِذَا تَوَضَّأَ It slightly might seem like it's a past tense. So that's why they add to the verse, Ida arada when he wish wills to what? Ida arada when the person wills to do wudu and he goes to do it. It's like the verse where Allah subhanahu wa taala he said, "Fa ida qarat al Quran." Are you with me? If you have read the Quran, "Fasta'id billahi seek refuge in Allah." You already read it. Allah says, "Fa ida qarat al Quran." If you have read the Quran, "Fasta'id billahi seek refuge in Allah." How does that work? You will say, فَإِذَا أَرَدْتَ قِرَاءَةَ الْقُرْآنِ If you if you want to and you are going towards wanting to recite the Quran, then say, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. So the Prophet said, said, إِذَا تَوَضَّعَ So we say, إِذَا أَرَادَ الْوُضُوء If the person wants to do wudu, فَلْيَجْعَلْ Let him place the lamb in the word فَلْيَجْعَلْ That lamb is lamb amrin. It's an order. Place in your nose. Ha. Place. فَلْيَجْعَلْ what does it mean, فَلْيَجْعَلْ? It means place. It means what? Place. فَلْيَجْعَلْ What do you, what does it mean, فَلْيَجْعَلْ? It means فَلْيَجْعَلْ فِي أَنْفِي مَا The other wording of Muslim explains it. What does it mean? أَيْ فَلْيَسْتَنْشِقْ مَا مَعْنَى إِسْتِنْشَاقْ إِسْتِنْشَاقْ is to take the water like this and is to dip on your, your nose inside your hand like this. And you, you, you sniff it up into your nose. That's called the, that's called inst istinshaq. Istinshaq is to put the water up. Because the riwayah of Muslim mentions the one, the top hadith, it says, فَلْيَجْعَلْ فِي أَنْفِيهِ مَاءً Let him place water on his nose. The other wording it says, فَلْيَسْتَنْشِقْ بِمِنْ خَرَيْهِ The min khara is this. Your, your nose, this is min khara. مِنَ الْبَائِ On top of here. On top of your nose here. From here, upwards is called min khara. 
So place the water over there. And ثُمَّ لِيَنْتَثِرْ And then after that, do, um, um, do um, as the Prophet said, فَلْيَنْتَثِرْ What does it mean, فَلْيَنْتَثِرْ? Again, the lamb is Amr. What does it فَلْيَنْتَثِرْ mean? It means to bring the water that is already that you smith up. So, istinshaq means, istinthar means what? It's to bring it down. Imam Malik, rahimahullah, <coughs> Imam Malik, rahimahullah, Imam Malik, rahimahullah, he mentioned that it's this right for the person to bring out the water, to bring out the water <coughs> from their nose um, by just taking it out. Imam Malik bought karaha. With just doing this, huh? you put the water up like that. Imam Malik dislikes it. What did he say? He said, do it with your hand or else you are like the dab. You're right, like the donkey and the riding beast. They do it like that. He said, use your hand. He showed karaha. Imam Imam al-Basai, in his sunan, he brings a the narration of Ali ibn Abi Talib, which is to use your what? It is actually to use your left hand. That is highly recommended to use your left, left hand. The wisdom behind using your left hand, brothers, is first of all, is tanzif. There's many wisdom behind using your nose. The first one is tanzif. Ma'ana tanzif. It is first of all to clean. As Imam Ibn Hajar rahimahullah, he mentions in his kitab Fatul Bari, the reason is to bring the water out is that you clean inside. Because cleaning it helps the recitation. Your pronunciation of the words come out correctly, so you can say, mm, the wonder properly, you clean out your nose. Good. That is one قول of Imam Ibn Hajar. Another one is طرد الشيطان to get rid of the shaytan. The Prophet told us in a hadith connected by Bukhari on the authority of Abu Huraira. He said, أحدكم, If one of you wakes up from your sleep, ha, فتوضأ, do wudu. Bring the water out of your nose three times. فَإِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ Because shaytan يَبِيتُ عَلَى خَيْشُوبَةِ He stays inside your nostrils. That's why shaytan stays there. So that is two. And also one of the other wisdom behind it, which is the third, to bring the water, uh, to, uh, to take the water up into your nose. Huh? So to take the water up into your nose. So to put the water up into your nose is what? Is to smell the water if it's pure or not. And also mabba is what we're going to come to, which is whilst you're going to your nose, you have to stop. You have to stop at your mouth and put some portion of that water into your mouth. Other narrations mention the madhmada. Other narrations mention the madhmada. Madhmada is when you do this. That allows you to taste the water. So you smell the water, you taste the water, and then you clean your nose out of it. You clean your nose with it. Now the Prophet ﷺ, he said in the hadith, he said, <coughs> Anyone who's using istajmara means anyone who's using a stone. And remember, don't use a brick. Don't use a brick. Istajmara does not mean bricks. It means hasa, pebbles, small stones. Not really a pebble, but a small stones. Small stones. You use it for what reason? To clean your urine and the, your front, your, your uh, back passage and the front by using stone. So it's used for the qubur and the dubur. You use the stone. Um, so istijmar, brothers, pay attention, is used for the stone. Istitaba is the general cleansiness of istitaba. It means to generally purify yourself um, and clean yourself. Whether it's with water or stone, it's called istitaba. But the stone specifically is called istijmar. With the water and the stone, both of them are called what? Istitaba. But to use the stone specifically is called istijmar. It's called istijmar. The Prophet ﷺ said, وَمَنِ istijmara." Anyone who uses stone, فَلْيُوتِرْ You do an uh, odd number. So what do you do? Three. If it's clean with three, 
So it starts from three. And we're going to come to it later. The other narration says three. It starts from three. So three. Is it clean with three? You can stop. If it's not clean with three, what do you do with five? If you clean it with five, good. And then seven. A person would clean it. Then the Messenger said, If he wakes up, one of you wakes up from his sleep. One of you wakes up. He comes out of his sleep. The Prophet وسلم, he said, He should wash. The lamb here is a command, it's an amr. He should purify and clean. What does he do? What does he clean? Yadayhi, both of his hands. Yadayhi, both of his hands. And here we have, uh, Yadayhi is used for what? As kafayhi, here, up to here. He has to clean up to here, not up to here. Just the uh, hands. He washes them. How many times does he, uh, when, when does he wash them? He washes, he washes them, فليغسل يديه. Let him wash his hands. Before he places it in the what? Before he places it in the vessel. Three times you're going to wash it. Three times. Anyone who wakes up from a sleep in which he was in, he should wash his hands three times before he puts his hand into the what? Into the plate. Because before what they used to do was, the water would be into a plate. Are you with me? Or an object. So the person would have to tilt. You tilt the water sideways, you wash your hands three times. Tilt it sideways. There you go. Again, once you finish, you can put your hand into it and start doing your wudu from it. You're allowed to, once you've washed it three times. Then the messenger said, فَإِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ For verily one of you, لا يدري, he is unaware, he has no knowledge, أين باتت يدو, يدو, where his hand stayed the night. Where his hand stayed the night. And the reason why I'm using the word night is because the word بَاتَ has that slight meaning in it. And Imam Ahmed took that view. He, took, he said that the only sleeping that the person has to wash his hand from is the night sleep, not the day sleep. If he sleeps daytime, he doesn't have to wash his hand three times and the command is not referring to him. Some of the scholars said, لا, the hadith, the illa, the reasoning why it wasn't permitted is because lack of knowledge of where your hand was. So when it's nighttime or not, no one ever knows where their hands are. So they said the illa is present in both of them. And the reason why it was used at night time is kharaja makhraj al-ghalib. Again, because the majority of the sleeping that the people do is the sleeping of the night. And not that, daytime is not part of it. Rather it is. And that seems to be stronger. That view seems to be stronger. In this hadith, brothers, if you ponder, this hadith refers to three types of complete purity. Three types of complete purity. The first one is takmilu tahara tiwaj. It is to complete the purity of the face. The pu- purity of the face in the wudu. By doing istinshaq and istintar. Taking the water in and letting that water out. One. Two. Takmilu tahara tisabilayn. Purifying the, uh, your, um, your genital, your private part, that which comes out from both passages. So the second purity. By cleaning it um, with either a stone. Naam, and using it on odd number. Number three, غسل اليدين, washing your hands بعد القيام من النوم, after waking up from a sleep, before you place it into the vessel. Because the one who is sleeping is unaware of where he has spent his sleep. He doesn't know. So those three. Those three. Mm-hmm. Fiqh al-hadith. The fiqh that's taken out of the hadith. One, al-anfu min al-wajh. The nose is part of the face. Fil wudu in the wudu. Some of you might think, of course that is. Well, no, your nose is part of your face. Is there a dispute about it? Yes, there is. Uh, not that the nose is part of the face, but whether the f- nose has to be that the, the istin thar and the istin shak, if it's wajib. Some of the ulama said it's not wajib. And what was the evidence? They said because Allah said in the ayah, فَغْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ Wash your faces. Allah did not mention in the verse, wash your your nose and your mouth. Mm. The scholars, they said, La. the ayah said it generally, and the hadith narrowed it down that the nose is useful. Because the nose is part of the face. So if Allah told you to wash the face, then the nose has to be washed as well. So there's no khilaf in this issue. Two, bayanu sifatul istintar. The hadith also clarifies the way to do the istintar, which is what? To take the water, to put it onto your nose, and then to take it up into your nose. And... 
the Sunnah has also met, the Hadith has also mentioned, sorry, the Istinthar, by making sure that the water comes out. Now, another issue that we need to know is that the Istinthar, as I said, which is to take the water up your nose, and the Madh Mada, the Istinthar means to take the water up, and the Madh Mada, they have to be done with Bigarfin, Bigarfatin Wahida. Bigarfatin Wahida. It has to be done with one hand. So you don't do the mouth, and then after that, you don't do the nose. That, the water that you took one, that water, you use it, a bit of it goes into your mouth, and the remaining goes into your nose. That is the Sunnah of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as I mentioned before, an Imam Malik, it was narrated from him that it's disliked for the person to bring out what is in the nose, the istinthar, without using the hand. Because yushabbihu fi'l al-dabba. It's similar to the um, beast. Number three, the wisdom behind istinthar. The wisdom that is behind bringing out what's in your nose. As I mentioned, the one of the wisdom is at tanzif It is to clean your nose. And I mentioned the call of Imam Ibn Hajar rahimahullah in Fathul Bari. Because when you clean your nose, your pronunciation of the verses and that which you want to say uh, in the recitation of the Salah will be very good. Number two, uh, this, this is the third point, uh, which is the wisdom behind istinthar. Also, tard al shaytan. You're, go, you're getting rid of shaytan, which spent its um, time in your nose. You get rid of him. Number four, brothers. Number four. An istinja. مخير فيه المرء بين الماء والحجارة. Number four, the istinja to purify yourself after you've done your call of nature. You have the choice if you want to use water or stone. You have the choice. You don't have to use water. And you don't have to use a stone. You can choose whichever one you want to use. Meaning not one, not one of them is mandatory on you specifically. You can choose whichever one you want. You can choose whichever one you want. You choose. So it's not like. You have to use the water if the water is present and you're not allowed to use the stone. And you're only allowed to use the stone when the water is absent. No, that's not the case. You can use whichever of the two you like, no problem. And now, the stone, what takes its place is tissue. If you use a tissue by itself without using the water, huh, you're allowed to. Like you remember, you're, are you really clean? The answer is no, not really. And some may argue, yes you are, but it's better to take tariq al ahwab the safe path. To do both of them. If you have both, use them. You have water and the tissue. Use both of them because it's complete. Five. Ghasul al yadain. Washing the hands. Qabla it khalima. Before you place your hands into the vessel is mandatory. Because the person does not know where his hand spent the night. The person does not know where his hand uh, spent the night. And I also mentioned. That Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah, he believed that there's a difference between the sleeping of the night and the sleeping of the day. If the, the, he said that the night, you need to wash your hand. And the day, you don't need to wash your hand. And the reason he said, because the Prophet used the word, la tad la yadri ayna ba, ba, tat, ba tat is used when the person wakes up from the night sleep. It's used for the person when he wakes up from the night sleep. But the ulama, they said, and the illa is mushtarak. The reasoning that was mentioned for the day is also present in the night. Which is what? It's not like any one of them you know where your hand was. Six. Istihbab. That is highly recommended. Ghaslun najasa. is highly recommended to clean the najasa. The pure, uh, impurity. Because uh, three times. It is recommended for you to clean anything that's impure three times, it's recommended. Because we were ordered in this hadith to do it three times. To do it three times. Number seven. Wujub al wudu min al That it's mandatory to do wudu after coming from the sleep. After coming from the sleep. That sleep, is it, are you with me? Is it the sleep where you lie down, or is it sleep that you sit down, or is it that is a bath, a research that is very long. But the vahir of this hadith shows, regardless of what sleeping you go through, huh, your salah is broken. Whether you're sitting, whether you're lying down, whether you're 
um, on in the position, you know, and there is aqwal regarding it. So the mas'ala needs tafsil and observation. But we will mention that inshallah in another book of fiqh. Number nine, mashru'iyatu, number eight, sorry. Mashru'iyatu, itar, liman istanja bil hijara, fal matlubu qat'u istijmar ala witr, walau anqa bidunih. <clears throat> the legislation by coming with odd numbers for the person who is using a stone for the istijmar and the condition is for it to cut so it goes on as long as you cut it but you still use odd numbers you use odd numbers so three has it has you have you cut the dirt he feels like no i still i still need to clean it but you're fine i still haven't cleaned it seven I still, so he goes on until he cleans it, until it becomes clean. Number nine, idkhalu yadi fil inai, placing your hand in the vessel with before washing it, washing it, la yadurul ma, it doesn't harm the water. Idkhalu yad, placing your hands into the vessel or the object without washing your hands, it won't harm the water. And this is a refutation of the Zahiriya, who used by saying that the water has to be poured away. The water has to be poured away. If the person wakes up and puts his hand into the cup, straight away that water has to be uh, um, Number 10, the completeness of the Sharia in giving consideration to purifying oneself. Number 11, Number nine, the good way that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa taught. Eleven. What did they say? Number nine. Number eleven. Before I got interrupted. Number eleven. <laughs> Sleep is taken. Eleven, eleven. The good teaching of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wa sallam by connecting the hukum, the rolling. By telling us the wisdom by behind why it was why it should be done like this, giving us a reason, Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so our iman can increase and our heart can find more tranquility. Because the Prophet said, Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for verily one of you does not know where his hand spent last night. He's unaware. Ah, uh, so this allows you to what? So this um, tell, it allows you to accept it even more. Now, brothers, as a conclusion, we need to take this matter, which is. Scholars have disputed in the ruling of the istithar, they, which is putting the water into your nose. There's that khilaf that came. Is it wajib or is it mustahab? Is it wajib or is it mustahab? The first view is that it's mustahab. It's highly recommended. And Badruddin al-Aini, rahimahullah, in his kitab, Umdatul Qari, he brought an ijma' that there is, is mustahab. He brought an ijma' that is mustahab. And that ijma' is weak. Because remember, bringing an ijma' can be broken with a number. With people that I bring and I say, what about these ijma'? One person can bring the ijma'. Kharqul ijma' to pierce a hole into ijma' is very easy. Meaning to bring it to its ground is very easy. Meaning, anyone who says ijma', all you need to do is to break that ijma' by bringing somebody who opposes. Here, great noble scholars have opposed him. Uh, so, Ahmed bin Hanbal didn't believe it was Mustahab. And Abu Ubaid Qasim bin Salam didn't believe it was Mustahab. Uh, Abu Thawr didn't believe it was Mustahab. Ibn al Mundir did not believe it was Mustahab. So, how could there be Ijma'? How could there uh, be an Ijma'? Ibn Battal is the one who brought all those names. And Ibn Qudama, Ibn Battal, he did the Sharh of Sahih al Bukhari. And also, Ibn Qudama and his Kitab al Mawli. He brought that Imam Ahmed and Abu Ubaid and Abu Thawr and Ibn al Mundir. All of them believed it's wajib. They all believe it's wajib. So, Bidruddin al-Aini, his ijma' is very weak of saying that it's mustahab. But the second view is that it's wajib. And I mentioned the names of those who said it's wajib. The ones who said it's recommended, the ones who said it's recommended, highly recommended, is the majority. It's the majority of the scholars. But it's not ijma'. But it's the majority. Um, what 
what was the evidence that they used? The evidence that they used was the Prophet's speech to the Bedouin man. He said, Tawadda, do the wudu kama amarak Allah, the way Allah ordered you. So they said, the way Allah ordered us to do the wudu is to wash the face. Allah did not tell us to do istithar, and Allah did not tell us to do istishar. And, it's, uh, and the mother. Allah didn't tell us all of this. The higher clearly says, wash your face. So, and the Prophet said to the Bedouin, when he was telling about the wudu, he said, do the wudu the way Allah ordered you. So they said, that's our evidence. Also, um, the second view. <clears throat> the second view is that it's wajib. That it's, that it's wajib, mandatory. It is mandatory. the mandatory. What did they use? They used the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam clearly ordered. He said, Fali yastanthir. Command from the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the ayah has been explained by who? The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the ayah is general and the Prophet specified and clarified it even more by saying that this needs to be done. The second argument that they brought was whenever the Prophet is a character, the way he done the wudu was mentioned, never has it been missed the fact that he done the istinshaq and the istintar. They said all, over, all the time it's mentioned and also the mother mother, it's also mentioned. They said it's never left out. Um, also, they argued by saying that the Prophet clearly gave a command. He said, فَلْيَسْتَنْثِرْ وَلْيَسْتَنْشِقْ And the Prophet's command, it shows that it's mandatory. Unless there comes another evidence, diverts it from the obligation and makes it mustahab. Which you guys have to come with. The third one that they said is that the ayah clearly has made it obligatory as well. Because the ayah says, wash your face. And the nose and the mouth are part of the face. So the ayah ordered you to wash your face. And you haven't washed your face by, not do, by leaving out the mouth and the nose, which the ayah told you uh, to do. The ayah told you to do. So this view seems strong, strongest. That it's mandatory. And Shaykh Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymeen and Shaykh Muhammad Nasiruddin al-Albani rahimahullah and Imam Muhammad ibn Hanbal, Abu Ubaid Qasim ibn Salam, Abu Thawr ibn Munzir, all of that they believe is obligatory. And their view seems the strongest. Um, <clears throat> the issue regarding the sleeping again. That I mentioned before, but now I'm going to go into a bit more. Which is, the sleeping in which the person is, obli it is, it is mandatory on him or her to wash their hands the majority of the scholars have taken the view, which is, it is any sleeping, whether it's morning, whether it's night, whether it's afternoon, whether it's evening, it doesn't matter, day or night. Any sleep, you have to do wudu. And they used the eye, the hadith itself, um, min no me from his sleep. From his sleep. They said, from his sleep, sleep. The Prophet said, generally, that he sleep. Ahmed ibn Hanbal came, and said, no, the sleeping is meant by the night. And he said, because the word that is used is meant by the night. So he said, I have brought a specification of the general that you guys are using. So my specification takes precedence over your general statement. And in that case, you all have to take my view in saying that it's only at night. The scholars, they said, no, there is nothing... There's no khusus or umum that is here. The umum has not been by it has not been diverted by a khusus. Rather, the umum still remains at its umum because kharaja makhraj al ghalib. It means that the majority of the people they sleep at night time. Right? Not everyone sleeps at daytime, and they don't get the chance to sleep at daytime. A lot of people they don't get they don't get that time. They sleep, but people have in common that they sleep at at night time. So that's why the Prophet ﷺ said that, and he used that particular wording. And also, the hikmah, the wisdom 
why the night time and uh, the wisdom why night time it would require for you to wash your hands is also the same wisdom why it would require daytime for you to wash your hands. Both of them are the same. Now.